Glory to God in the highest, my blessed family in Christ. Wherever you are in the kingdom of God today, thank you for joining me and for your continued support. A rainbow is actually a full circle, but because of our vantage point, because of where we see it here on earth, we generally only see that arc just a piece of it but you can imagine from where the Lord is you know, he sees the entirety of it sometimes we don't see the full picture especially when it comes to promises and we get impatient and begin to idolize them or to doubt the Lord's goodness when you know just like a rainbow the promise is already complete the promise is already fulfilled it's just a matter of when the Lord reveals certain things to you. Remember that in Ephesians 2, 6, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Here you are today on this plane here, but in the spirit you are seated in heavenly places and that is the vantage point from where you must really judge and take perspective from in all situations because we find ourselves disappointed when here on this earth things don't seem to come to pass the way that we want them to when we don't have all the details when things happen and we feel like God's punishing us and we're like Lord why did you let this happen and he sees the entirety of the picture you know so in our flesh we be can become easily disappointed and disgruntled and doubt the Lord and that's you know, the enemy wants that. It's a dangerous place for us to be as people of faith. But if we revert to being spirit-led and we go to that higher vantage point of where we are, seated in heavenly places with the Lord, then in any given situation, can you truly trust, especially when it seems contrary, when everything seems to be falling apart, you know, the fact that you're seated in heavenly places, you don't need to get up from there. You don't need to get up from that seating. You don't need to focus on every little thing because you're seated next to the one who is omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent. And he's really good at paying attention to details. I mean, you, you recall in the Old Testament, he, down to names, of families like he he remembers I forget where that was I want to say somewhere in numbers like he remembers everything the Lord does not forget anything he never forgets to attend to your details or to your heart or to your prayers or desires you just have to stay seated you know sometimes we get up really quick and we start pacing and worrying you have to stay seated in those heavenly places because again there is where you can see the entirety of that rainbow, the entirety of the situation, which sometimes means not that you know every detail of the situation, but which, which means I don't know everything, but I'm seated next to the one who does. Sometimes the Lord will, you know, he, he anointed David as a child and he's not the only one that that happened to and that promise didn't come to fruition for decades even you know sometimes you know the whole promise but you're still asked to wait but sometimes you don't know all the details of of promises of you know the the will of the lord for you and that's when he's calling you to trust and the only way that it's easy to trust is when you're seated firmly in that heavenly place because then can you truly forsake all the feelings that are coming against your faith all the circumstances that are coming against the truth which is that God's plans are to prosper you that's never going to change stay seated in your heavenly place and know that his promises for you aren't going to change his love for you is not going to change his nature will not change. You know, you can feel totally comfortable in knowing that when you get all disgruntled and disheartened, 
And sometimes you let that, if you let that continue day after day, after week, after month, after year, it'll turn into a root of bitterness. And before you know it, you'll be faithless. You know, you have to know that in any of these feelings, the disheartened, disappointed, disgruntled, you're wrong. And you should be grateful to know that you're wrong. You know, you feel this way because you you think that something's going amiss. You know, oh, the Lord forgot me. Oh, you know, it's not supposed to be this way. Whatever it is, just know, you know what? These feelings are just, they're just feelings. And I'm, I'm choosing to rest in the Lord. I'm choosing to stay seated in my heavenly places. You know, I don't say wrong from a place of like bad, you're evil. No, just... I personally take great pleasure in knowing that I'm wrong when I feel in those lower level feelings because instantly I'm like, Kelly, you're just, you're freaking out. You're wrong. Like the Lord is right. He hasn't changed. Nothing's changed. He loves you. You know, things are coming to pass. It's okay. <sighs> Breathe. I like knowing about the Lord's sovereignty over all things. You know what I mean? It's when we believe that we are sovereign do we fall into these places of feeling so disappointed, you know, condemning ourselves, shaming ourselves. And you don't need to because the Lord is sovereign. You just need to stay firmly planted, seated in that heavenly place. You know, do not keep coming off that, that seat for every little thing because faith rests faith rests and it's necessary you know and let your faith as you rest in the lord like in his promises and knowing about his sovereignty your faith is going to grow it's going to flourish it's going to get bigger and purer and as it does this is truly when you see many things coming to pass i testify that in times where I just rested in the Lord, like really, truly just stopped, you know, um, in my heart, just tripping over anything in my life, trying to make my own moves. When I stopped doing these things, did I see such great manifestation of the Lord's will in my life? Because what happens when we sit in those lower level feelings is that is our will. We're using our will to feel upset and angry and all these things and the lord's will will not contend with your will he says you must submit your will and then his will will be done but if you are intent on living in your own will then yeah of course not only are you going to be upset and disgruntled and stressed out because you're not god but then you're going to prevent the Lord's will from coming to pass in your life. You know, for any of you in closing that are really, you know, wrestling with being in the joy of the Lord, or you've been on this walk for a long time and you just feel like the promises of the Lord, they just, I don't know. It's like, I feel like he forgot me or something, you know, I really encourage you to repent. I encourage you to repent because again, you're wrong. And I say this to you with love, know that his, in his sovereignty, you know, he never fails. His peace and joy are always available. So if you can't access those things, you are out of the presence of the Lord. You've gotten up from the seat of your heavenly place and you need to get back down. And the best way to do that is to repent, just truly repent, you know. Lord, forgive me for doubting you. Forgive me for doubting your goodness. And as you learn, because it is a learned process to rest in the Lord, you're going to witness things come to pass. You know, often we have all these backed up blessings because even the Lord is so merciful and compassionate that even when we are refusing to 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 rest in him, he knows we're just human, you know, so he kind of like stores your stuff up for a little bit, you know, and uh, whatever that is, you know, he stores up your wisdom because we lack wisdom when we're not staying rested in the Lord. You know, he stores up um, all sorts of internal blessings, which absolutely manifest into external blessings. Absolutely. You know, it requires um, someone that doesn't have the Lord's wisdom, you know, doesn't know how to use what the Lord has given them their gifts for his glory. You know, someone that lacks uh, the knowledge of the Lord, someone that lacks walking in the gifts of the Lord, doesn't understand how to live their lives in a way that's for his glory, that becomes a blessed journey, you know. 
Our journeys are not blessed when we're acting outside of his will. Our journeys do not become blessed when we are refusing to rest in him, which is to trust in him completely to the point of, I choose joy. I will stay in the joy of the Lord. I will stay in, uh, be still and know that I am God. I will be still and know that he is God. You know what I mean? As opposed to freaking out, getting upset with the Lord, putting all this undue pressure on yourself when you're not God. You know, uh, when we go into that really messy place, no, you're not going to see moves in your life from the Lord. When you rest in the Lord, yes, suddenly it's like all that clutter goes away and your path, you start flowing in the spirit and you will see the great moves of the Lord in your spirit. And that's going to be illustrated by his peace and by his joy. Absolutely. You must stay seated in those heavenly places because the promise is there and it's full circle. It's complete. You know, you just can't always see it from where you are here on this earth. So you must remember, hey, you know what? I'm seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. I'm going to trust in him. I don't see the full circle of my promise yet. I don't see the coming to pass of, of the whatever it is, you know, that you've prayed to the Lord for, but his will be done. I'm going to remain trusting the Lord. I'm going to remain seated here. I'm going to remain in his joy and his peace. And in his joy and in his peace, staying submitted to the Lord, do you see his beautiful will coming to pass in the really, truly exceptional life that he's given you? None of you have fallen through the cracks of the Lord's view None of you have been forsaken or left by him. So don't you forsake or leave him. You stay seated next to him because that is the will of the Father in your life.